Mailbag Preview Show, episode 291, joined by a full cast again. Peter, welcome back. Uh, we you, missed you last right. week. You, you had your tip, but no no winners from any of us, but uh, hoping you being back could uh, could bring us back to, to glory. What's the so, leaderboard at? <laughs> uh, well, it's just Pete at the moment on uh, from his, what do you spent? $200, you got your 348 back. Otherwise, we've spent 200 and returned zip. Dusted it. Watch me get really grindy now and just start like, you know, spending it on dollar ninety favorites like in Paratrues. Well, yeah, yeah I was, that's that's a potential play for the downhill skiers <laughs> of the world. Yeah. Vinny's spirit didn't do much for you last week. No, I I was a little bit concerned. I was on my way out to Caulfield as that race was about to jump, and I was like, oh, it's not exactly firm the market like I thought it would be. And then the race shape was completely wrong, and it stopped in a straight and. Another will completely and utterly brain them. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, are we March? I think you rule were. number three. Rule number three. Yeah. Um, yes. Rob, you I think got the closest. Macarena was that second? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's solidly backed. Um, but the winner, you know, Cabalas, horse I mm. once touted as you know when yes. Uncle Chris had him, mm. um, is has won with very well. You know. Um, but you know, I think I think still think Macarena is a good horse. Perfect. And uh, I think I ran third, and Jack was down the track as well. Ulanova, the Kiwi. Oh, filthy Kiwi, Kiwi, that thing. Mm. <laughs> Never again. Never again. I thought on the corner. Well, here we go. That's good luck catching me, horse. boys. Yeah. No. All right, we'll get straight into it. Uh, two decent meetings there at Ramwick and Flemington. We'll start at Ramwick. Rob, you wanted to have a look at race one, the Piero Plate for two-year-olds over 1,100. Shangri-La Express is the uh, the Waterhouse bot two-year-old domination continuing here. Yeah, I saw. I almost I saw the price and I went oh last night, and that's sort of now coming back to where it should be. Um, you know, this this is just like a classic two-year-old match race. There'll be some people in one camp and some people on the other. Um, the Coolmore horse, I didn't find it from the yard at all. Um, unassuming little thing. Um, whereas Shangri-La Express, big, thick boy, Jack. Big, thick boy. <laughs> Alabama Express, we've been looking out for them. Bit, bit of heat around them in the in the sales. Um, uh, anyway. There was a huge winner here in New Zealand by 10 lengths as a two-year-old Alabama Express last week. It was um, very impressive. All right, Jono. With the with the news, um, anyway, <laughs> they, anyway, they uh, paid two twenty for it. Two twenty for it. Shangri La. Mm. Well, and then you got the, is it Coolmore Homebred or did they go and, go and buy that one? Excuse me, we've got is that Switzerland. It. Yeah, I just they only paid one point five <laughs> mil for it off, <laughs> off Arrowfield at the East English Easter sale last year. One point five out of a oh. Canadian mare. And Enjoy. what are you saying? It's a little thing. Yeah, it's just a little athletic thing, you know. I couldn't, I couldn't, you know. I had it, I think, fourth in the numbers, and then I've gone, oh shit, that's a dollar ninety. Um, and it won well, you know. Um, whether the form is any good, that's what makes these races so exciting. Um, it did win well, but um, you know, the go forward border, Waterhouse Bite Horse. Um, I think uh, it's it it's could be the one for the whole lot. Waller's going at 10% his last 100, I think, and Gay's going at about, or Gay and Adrian, who also train a beautiful yes, yes, yes cult uh, on behalf of us, uh, which we purchased this year's Magic Millions. I think there's about 10 or 20% left. If you want to get involved with us, with that horse, with the most dominant two-year-old stable in Australia, Jono, J-O-N-O, at themailbag.com.au. They're going at 30% their last 100. I think it's even fatter their last 50. They're absolutely airborne. Does that sway the market a bit, Peter? Or do the, does the market go, well, Uncle Chris is going at 10%. Uncle Chris is going to get to his average of like 16 17%. So he's going to have his little 25% run soon. The tin hat in myself and, well, it's obviously my tin hat's nowhere near the size of Rob's, but <laughs> I'm thinking I'm smelling prize money. We see the riders lift. Do we see Uncle Chris lift? I mean... They were united uh, during the week when they um, they really sat down the powers that be in racing New South Wales and stuck it right up them about the proposed sale of Rose Hill. They go head to head here. Mm-hmm. The market 
It would be fascinating. What do you think they do, Pete? Oh, I've got no idea. You just wait for the last five minutes in Sydney, don't you? Isn't that how it works there? Mm. No MBLs. We just wait, sit on our hands, see what they do in the parade, see what Munsey's tipping last three minutes. <laughs> no, he's, he's with Love Breaks now. Is he? Yeah. Oh, God. My, well, my apologies to, uh, to New South Wales. Won't take He's a bet, but they'll run you up at the sales. One of the greatest racing things I've ever seen in my life. They're, they're tipping Mount Yard Mail now as well. If you, I saw um, oh. Matt Stewart on, on, on an ad. Mount Yard Mail direct from Ladbrokes, you know, to your app. Who's um, doing that? Ladbrokes. Oh, but, I mean, who's in the yard? Have you, have you seen I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> it might be Is there a yard. man in the red hat? <laughs> No, I, I don't know who it Probably is. Probably like, yeah, we don't even care. We, we, <laughs> the the million to one that we were to ever partner with them for our content is probably just about to drift if I keep speaking. So, um, Do you reckon uh, that, you know, the head honchos, Uncle Chris and Gay spoke to each other before they gave Racing New South Wales, you know, one at the race club, a bake? Um, would have been, been a little, little, yeah. been a little, little cheeky dinner. You know, somewhere out there in Western Sydney, after a big day at the classic sale, um, something like that, I'd say. Okay, Self-interest well, governs us all, Roberto Scales dog. You know this. I know. Well, that's that's the problem with the, with the race club. It, it's just you know, it's short term self-interest, um, feathering nest. Um, you know, just running the running the game into you know the ground and just doing what they're told. You know, by big boss. You know. Race clubs take directing from him. <laughs> back, back to that race. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just run out for a little bit there. Um, Shangri La Express obviously bet Ruda Royale in the Golden Gift that ran that run second in the English Millennium. Uh, yes, yeah, it rings a bell. Yep. Um, and then proper horse Ruda Royale. So yeah, the form is looking nothing yeah. wrong with the form. Although Switzerland's thing that it bet Castagna came out and won the Lon- Dali Lonro plate as well. So, yeah, last that day, mm. little, little little thing got under my guard again. Um, but for me, yeah, I'm going. I'm with the Waterhouse, but I think I made that. Um, oh, we'll have a look at the other ones. A lot of unraced horses mm. outside those two. All right, perfect. We'll move on from that and we'll go to race eight, the Light Fingers, 1,200 metres, a three-year-old fillies, group two with $300,000. Uh, Rob, a couple that you've uh, backed before here, Tis Invincible. Mm-hmm. You yeah, Mochi. yeah so, Kia Mochi being on, Kia yeah. Mochi being on her many times. Her form is grim. Um, well, great. Just got the highest number of rating points, but terrible if you're a punter. Um, I think she's suited at the 1,200. Um, Tis Invincible rightly should be favourite. Um, the one without the rating points um, who's in the race, I think, is Arctic Glamour. If you look at the trial the other week, it looked like it just breezed past my girl Macarena in the trial. She's got a devastating turn of foot, Jack. Yeah, uh, 185k, the premier... A frosted. Um, what a setback. What a setback indeed. 21K wiener, um, Kamochi. Fascinating. Um, good horses, Rob. Very nice horses. Fresh blood, old blood. Yeah, the, the gay water has the autumn ballet might be there. She won like yep. the, sort of the equivalent race in the spring and then didn't do much after that. Um, she looked great that day. I was kicking myself. I didn't have something on for the, for the punters at 25 when she just held off my pick Kamachi in that race. I'm pretty sure. I the pain. Did you ever This find- is a nice, nice yard race, isn't it? Like mm. three year old fillies right up your alley. Did you ever find the Cornwall one learning to fly, the one that fell on the. Uh- the slipper. Uh yeah, she can walk. Um, nice walker. I guess she's she's you know in those blue colours. You got J Mag. She's gonna she's gonna take a percentage of the market. Shed's uh, Yeah, she she has grown. Uh, it would be interesting. It would be interesting to see if she's grown and and um matured. Um, because yeah, she she was always looked slightly immature, but you know was doing a lot on raw ability. So she could be a scary prospect, similar to um. Was a great horse of gays that more joyous. Like she was as a two-year-old, she was like a small thing and eventually kind of filled out. 
So anyway, that's a scary prospect if she if she's um gonna live up to her breeding and mm. ability. Was- so I don't know, man. I don't know who I'm going to tip, but you know, Tiz Invincible, I, I think is is number one seed. All right. Anything to add there, Pete? No, I got nothing. I'll uh, I'll slowly dip my toe back into New South Wales, but uh, not just yet. All right. Perfect. We'll move over to Flemington then. Uh, start off with race seven, the CSA Stakes, fourteen hundred meters for three year olds. Jack, where are we looking here? There's a couple here that are very talented that have done a good job last prep, but they're first up. Um, the trials are reasonably strong from everything. Um, I think there's moderate speed here because there's a gate waterhouse runner, and I think Run Harry Run. If I owned it, it'd go forward, but it is first up, second ever prep. Um, I. This is sort of, I don't know, I guess so confused now, Pete, but it might be rule number seven, never yep. force a map. Don't map them where you want them to be, map them where they will be. And I think Run Harry Run's likely to go forward, but if it went back and was written cold, I wouldn't be, like, absolutely shocked about it. Um, Verdad has trialled really well and trialled again on Monday, little tune-up, which I'm surprised he's so sort of tuned up Coming off a derby, I think it was a silly idea to send that horse to a derby. I think he's got a lot of talent, um, and it can sort of gut him when they come back as a as a uh, second seat, the second half of the year three year old. But he's jumped out well. He's drawn barrier two. He's going to get the peach. So Gay Source Ambassadorial will cross and put itself there. Riff Rocket, I can't see how it doesn't sort of land midfield from five. Um, the interesting horse for the map, and just to the interesting horse in the race, is the 11 Hay Fat Cat who backs up from the Autumn Stakes. It was maybe the fastest last 100 of the day last week at Caulfield on a good day's racing. Um, they're a hard stable to figure out. I, I just sort of just don't try and just guess. Uh, I'm going to sort of send you to the to the hospital if you try and figure out how to, what they're doing. Um, I really liked... Et to Brute's win in its maiden uh, last start at Sandown. Closed very strongly versus the day. It might have been top three, four closes of the whole meeting. Went one in a style that wasn't easy to do that day at Sandown, but drawn 11, I think they have to go back. Um, I, I sort of wanted to focus, Peter, on the race horses here, like this prep, as a little fitness edge and an intent edge versus the, the more – well credentialed horses that are that are first up. Uh I, I think the race revolves around Otago, who's had a j- tick over jump out in between runs and gets a peach. Ben Mellum, thirsty, recently engaged, I'm told. Um uh, from three, he'll get like the absolute PR you'd think. Um Amigo started twelve dollars at Caulfield behind Brave Mead, whereas King Colorado started at eleven. You're now getting thirty fives and four dollars. So you have to, if you like King Colorado, which I think you should, you have to like Amigo a little bit. Uh, it's going to get a good run from four. It could, it should. Um, and then there's King Colorado. The map. The map says to me it can show in ten. But I think if we've learned anything in the last little bit, this is a this is rule number seven. Trust the king. Mark Zara will figure this out. The price is so close to poisonous, though it's not funny. But I think he'd probably start shorter. King Colorado is primed to to win this race and get that win on his CV that he sort of needs. Uh, I think he sets up perfectly. I think this rail. And this tracks the fairest you get in Victoria, and uh, it's no significant disadvantage to even if they do go back. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to work my betting around Otago, Hay Fat Cat as a save more, but the bigger results will be Amigo and King Colorado, who weren't suited in that Brave Mead race at Caulfield, Peter. I kept it a lot more simple than that. I was just happy to have something on Otago. <laughs> Just from the map. Uh, Makes sense. Jack, all Jack's waffle, waffle, waffle. 
came back yeah. to yeah Otago gun spot thirsty thirsty jock. And I like yeah. as well. Not only has it got conditioning on a lot of these, but it's come out of even tempo or solid tempo on debut there at Bendigo. Fast tempo their last start, so I know the margin wasn't flattering, so to speak. He just sort of had to grind away and get the job done. But the splits were still good going through the line. He gets improvement. He's tuned up. Mick Price and Kent Junior third up. I like in the city. Jock trainer combos pretty hot. Like it's just that's just a box ticker for me. And if I've got get beaten by something first up, you know, so so be it. But I think that's the horse that the market can gravitate towards. At least you've got more safety there as opposed to one of the first up horses. And really you're just waiting for them to parade. So in a field full of first uppers, I thought that was one of the better bets on the card. Uh, I don't I don't disagree. I would have him shorter and sort of have him as a better result of those four I've mentioned if the race was at the Valley or Caulfield. But just this track, I don't think is the significant advantage to the advantage his map position is compared to those other tracks. Yeah, Plumington is the best good horses track. And um, you're saying King Colorado, that might likely the best horse, Jack. Oh, I'm not saying that. No, okay. I think Verdad's got the the most scope to be the best horse, but I, I don't really know to be honest. Like Riff Rocket, the sort of two of him, he just outstayed him in the Derby. He probably never go to twenty five hundred again. Um, I've, I I like Verdad. I've always liked Verdad, um, but I just thought first up he's he's riskable at the price. For um, yard watches, if you want to know what a three year old staying. You know, looks like it's that cap for a for um Uncle Chris number eight. Um, it's just a what what a staying three year old looks like as it as it's something to benchmark yourself. There, there's it, there's it, and um Tannhauser that are both still cults, which I found interesting for Uncle Chris. Cap for a by Schnitzel, yet it looks like an absolute die in the wall stayer. Yeah, Tannhauser didn't do much last. Last prep, so it's interesting. It still is a cult. Uh, yeah, it is, eh? Yeah. Mm. With those silks on. Yeah. Uh, all right. Pretty in-depth there on that race. Let's move on to race eight, the Black Caviar Lightning over 1,000 metres, group one, wait for age. The Kiwi Mare, Imperatriz is the short favourite and at $1.95 around that mark at the moment. Is that a fair price, Jack? Is she vulnerable on Saturday? I think she's vulnerable. I think it's a. I think her price is probably two ten, two twenty though, so it's not like significantly against her. Um, I think she trialed how she normally trials. I did think in the, a photo I saw she looked quite thin for a a mare first up, especially a sprinter like sort of, you know, talking more yard stuff. I'm pretty sure all of us would agree. Like, I, I wouldn't care what size they were, how heavy they were first up a 1,000 metres a sprinter at any level of race. And um, I thought she was a little bit thin. Um, I Am Unstoppable's got straight form. Bella Nipotina's got some straight form, and so is Imperatrice. The rest of them don't really. Uh, the Astrologist, I think, has gone. Espiona's not a 1,000 metre horse. It'd be like proper Uncle Chris stuff, and I want to see Uncle Chris getting hot before I contemplate, you know, believing in miracles. Uh, Rich Fortune's out of its depth, but it's fit. Cylinder has got blinkers on first ups and a cult. Like he appeals to me as a setup horse to to for the, like, the way the industry works. To he's the one that needs this win to bump up that 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 uh, pedigree and that stallion profile. Private Eye, hard horse to figure out. The market always frosts upon it. Uh, I think that I'm just going to wait and see what the market says because uh, he's so good at training Joe Pride that if he's not ready, he's not ready. And if he is, he'll probably go very close to winning. Um, Bella Nipotina, Peter, is a tricky horse because I don't think it's a 1,000 metre horse, but yet first up last prep was its best performance and it was over 1,000 metres in Sydney. That is in the back of my head and it also likes the straight. I like the barrier. But I think what makes the race just impossible and unbettable are the prices of the contenders to knock off the very, very good mare and 
the impossible task of trying to build a speed map here. I don't know what will lead. I don't know what will sit last. I, I, I've never, ever had such a hard time mapping a, a horse race in my life. So that's rule number 7.6. There's been three rule number sevens today. Yeah, I know. I've got to fucking figure out what the actual numbers are. But they're all actual rules. But if you can't map them, you can't bet it. And... I have no idea what they'll do here. And the market will, like, Private Eye might sit outside Cylinder if Private Eye is firm late. Or Private Eye might drift a point or two, Pete, and it'll be sit at the back with Espiona. Yeah. It's, I, look, I tend to agree what, with what you said in that Cylinder and I am unstoppable are probably the two that, if any, are going to be really tuned up, ready to go first up, will be one of those two, the three, uh, the three year old Colts. But, I mean, she's clearly the best here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the market really just rattles her late and she goes right into the odds-on range. But, Jono, you're the resident Kiwi here. Do you know what her grand final is this prep? Um, I don't know. Without off the top of my head. They had three group ones, didn't they, lined up, but I can't yeah. um, mm -hmm. remember what they were. So I guess that's it. They're, they're going to try and win, you know, all of all three of those and at least get another onto her CV, but she doesn't really have to do anything more. Um, yeah, this is just like a narrative race, isn't it? Yeah, and with I'm Unstoppable, I, I agree. He's like right there. Got SPs in the right races. He is likely really wound up. He's gone down the straight three times, not over 1,100. Not over a thousand, I mean, which is a concern for me. But he's gone really well every time, so he's a straight horse. He likes the straight. Yeah, but he's a bit of a like wobbler, I reckon. Like, Jamie Carr's an elite rider with a great set of hands, but I would have, I would have gone like Zara, Shin, D Lane, and work backwards from there. Big strong boys to sit over him because if he wins this, they're away. Whoever owns him. And and job done for Lloyd Kennywell and and Lucy Yeomans. Who could forget yeah. last year when uh, Old Nature Strip was half slow away and J Mac just got home on the Coolmore Colt for at another zero sort of business. I think that was the year before Home Affairs. Yeah, Home Affairs. It was filthy, filthy. So I, I I'm um you know, I'm pretty I love Private Eye. He's a proper, proper sprinter. Um, and even Joe Pryor, I think he might have ran him over 2,000 metres, so even the geniuses get it, get it. or maybe just good horses can run any, any distance. We've got the expressway stakes coming up. We all know the story about Ty, they're not winning that race as an eight-year-old. Um, yeah, we all do, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Jono doesn't know who you're talking about, and I'm not sure either. But... Ty, they're not, was, he, he, I think he ran in the Melbourne Cup, but as an eight-year-old, he, he won the 1,200 metre first up weight for age race as, as, a, as an eight-year-old. It's a pretty remarkable achievement. Great grand old horse for a guy, Walter. Anyway, um, Private Eye, I think it's I, I think it's going as good as ever. And what Jack is saying and what that trial about Imperatriz the other day has me a little bit concerned that she's going as good as she's ever been. So, um, yeah, very exciting race. Um, I, I think it's a two-horse race, but, you know, um, they're the two kind of exposed great horses and the rest are all trying to get there. Yeah, I, I just think, think like with Private Eye, like it, whilst he's a very, 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 very good horse, and he, like like you said, he can get a trip. He's like he started two dollars twenty in the Champions Mile, okay. six hundred meters Flemington. A thousand meters is an extremely different setup to even twelve hundred. And whilst this, I wouldn't say this is the tippy top. Like genuine group one wait for age race, it, it still is that as mm. good as we've got, and surely he's going to be a bit exposed no, I, over a thousand. Well, he, 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 I think if you look at his form, he, he, he pipped me. I was on the good horse overpass, um, which, which ran and led over a thousand meters. He sat three wide and, and toughed it, toughed it out last campaign. First up, his first up record is, yeah, it's well, that, that runs enormous. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think I, I, overpass is no joke, Jack. No, I agree. I, I think if you had to bet and you never do, gamble responsibly, legitimately gamble responsibly. Rule so you can keep seven. on gambling. Uh, 1 800 858 858. 
Um, the responsible thing to do would be go to themailbag.com.au and buy Peter or Rob's stuff this weekend so you can bet responsibly in Sydney and in Perth. Uh, I think they're moving the Perth meeting, but you'll get some betting advice over the weekend. Uh, but I think the responsible way, if you had to have a bet here, which you never do, would be to have an absolute shilling on Rich Fortune and maybe three shillings on Bella Nipotina. That's not what I thought you were going to say, but anyway, play on. <laughs> I think Bella Nipotina's explosion first up, last prep's worth respecting. Yeah, I, I, they they did seem to get the best out of her on drier tracks last prep versus previous preps. Mm. So I don't know if they changed something with regards to her training because obviously prior to that, she did seem to be better equipped on the softer tracks. But I think she caught a few people out there last prep. You know, even in like that gear kick stakes, you know, she's won it. Double figures uh, and look, her runs prior to that on good threes and good fours. Like, so, yeah, they were they were pretty sharp. So, can't disagree with what you said there with Bella. All righty, we're not we're not too sure on the lightning then. Yeah, it's it's, it's tough. Like that's a great yard race. I've, I'm half tempted just to go out for that race and then turn around and leave before the last when Poland runs around. Ah, well, that's a joke. <laughs> The old um, man will be there, actually. He, he he knows the owners of Imperatriz. He's quite emotionally involved in Imperatriz. Yeah. He's uh, backed it like every... every. He, he, he has a bigger bet than he... Because he uh, just, just loves it, you know, when a horse keeps winning like that. It's, it's emotion, <laughs> he's emotionally attached, which is not a good way to bet, Jack. If you get emotionally involved with with an animal, what rule's that? Rule number. That's, that's rule number... Um, that's rule number 11, and... I only had 10 rules until I met Scurry, and then I had to make number 11, yeah. basically. That rule is for Rob. Yeah, well. Oh, that's yeah. my boy. Ball is it's it. My, oh, but, ball is it. Yeah, that's it. It's, yeah, anyway, but Imperatrice is a good one of those horses to have because yeah. um, she just keeps winning, and mm. she's those, she's made those short prices look look like, you know. Well, that that's that's the thing. Odd, is that you get a dollar, what, basically, evens now, if she... Firms into a dollar fifty and wins by three lengths. You know, like you're not getting a price again in this prep. Yeah, so. I also reckon the the draw is a bit of a trick. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Straight I have her about two ten, two twenty. If she was drawn seven, I'd have a probably dollar ninety two dollars. So you're wanting to go more towards the middle of the track than staying inside. Just want that versatility. If she's half yeah. slow, like she was ridden, she was back last around the valley first up last prep mm -hmm. and just circled them. But if she goes back three pairs back or one pair back inside and gets behind one that stops and it's all clumped up on the inside, there's a just there's more chance of, of a disaster with the inside draw than an outside draw in a small field down the straight. Through that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Interesting Zara on Rich Fortune. That's a interesting jock to be sort of tailing drawn on the inside of it. Mm. So I, I think Opie personally will just basically sit off Rich Fortune, just get a little suck into the straight. There's no win there on Saturday. Um, I, I think you'll get a pretty cushy run. And, and look, there's clearly not a great deal of speed up front here. So could he even lead? He obviously led it um, in the Manicato. Yeah, I just think, I don't know. I've got no idea. Mm. Like, I've never That's had less good. confidence in a map in my life. Could Imperatriz lead? 100% yeah, it could. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it went back last, first up yep. last prep. Like, and we all know that you want to be up forward because they usually go slower than... You're thinking down the straight. Is that right, Jack? Yeah, I think yeah. less relevant Saturday though, Pete, in like such a small field. Yeah. I mean, look, if it was if it was my horse, I would just be saying, look, D lane on cylinder, it's probably not going to go quick, but he's mo your most likely leader. Just like suck up towards the outside if you can get cover perfect, but just try and present at the 600 and just kill him. It could look like a scene at a gladiator at the 600, just like seven or six horses abreast, just charging. Yeah. Anyway, fascinating yeah. narrative, and we've spent too much time on it. All right. <laughs> That's a we'll good call. To the best bets, then, who's ready to provide theirs? Anyone? I am 
Look, I, so Otago, I'm obviously happy enough to, to have an investment, but I, I do concede that it is a bit of a tricky race. Uh, there's a very short favourite in Jimmy Star in race nine, and I'm not discounting the horse's ability. It's just that few of the other horses have probably got more runs on the board to what we've seen so far. I thought the horse in that field that's a really pretty decent price and maps well for Jai is Carb Bling. So I went each way last week and I'm not an each way punter, but I am going each way again. So oh. each way Carb Bling to try and knock off Jimmy Starr, um, which is very, very short. I think I'm backable at that quote, but others will probably disagree with that. But having yeah. Peter here grace me up even more than ever because we do it a lot very similar way. So often I like I half like the same horse. So now I'm like, oh fuck. I, I think Carb Bling is too big a price, drawn perfect for Jai. Like he, he'll sit off the fence from gate three, um, you know, suck up in towards the straight and got a pretty decent sprint on that horse. So that's the way I'm thinking. Uh Jimmy Starr, meanwhile, with Willow, I I suspect he's probably going to ride Jimmy Star cold, but um, I don't know. There's probably a little bit of versatility with that runner as well. One of the great progressions, Jimmy Star, and it was eight dollars in the All Star Mall. Eight dollars. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. It was uh, winning a benchmark sixty five over here in September last year. There's a ten dollar eighty chance, and it's just gone. Yeah, full credit. And- um, interesting to see Windstorm resuming after over a thousand days off. Mm. I, although I, I doubt Windstorm will run if it's um, if there's an upgrade to a good three. Headquarters, the cushion. Yeah, there's you know not not that much rain around and anyway. All right, on. Rob. Uh, I'm going to go uh, race seven, the Apollo Stakes, the time on Apollo Stakes. I'm on, going to pay the J Mac fine. Two thirty, I think, is is. Oof. You know, I get very uncomfortable around this price point, Jack. But uh, I think Fangirl is, you know, mis- her Mister Brightside, fourteen hundred meters. It's it's to me in my mind right now. It's a flip of the coin who would win in on a perfect no bias track. She's the she's um, militarized is too short compared to her. Um, then you've got the old boy, think it over, champion and Cascadian. Probably run a hole, um, but I think Fangirl is just better than these and wins. Jono? All right. Uh, Alice Lee, race five, number seven, Just a Floozy. <laughs> uh, was back in April last year, it was started at $1.40. And bet Orchestral and Molly Bloom, who have both uh, Orchestral's won a restricted race at Cracker, but Molly Bloom's won the Group 1000 Guineas. Um, she returned with a fourth on Cracker Night, running on from the back after a long break, and I uh, think she'll be better suited on Saturday at Ellerslie. Second up. I think uh, six bucks, I think. Very good. Rob, what was your price? 230 yeah, two thirty. I'm I'm happy enough to lock that in now. I don't I don't think we'll be getting any any longer. Jack, help me around this price point. Where's it going to go? Um, where's it settle? Uh, off speed, but you've got Ramwick in there four meters, so it should be okay running. How far off speed? What's the tail? Wouldn't it be? It's not a big field. Oh, it's Fangirl. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I'd go stake half now, half SP or something. Barrier eight, so she's drawn out wide. So look, but you got Jamie. So you, you got Navajo Peak. Um, I think we had a. It doesn't look to be any speed, so it could be tricky. Uh, Five fifty. Um, I'll record for just a floozy, by the way. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just looking to get get on the board. You know, two seconds last two weeks. Um, I think you know, just can, need to consolidate. Need a winner. I'll have 50 HYA race seven, number 10, Amigo. At the big price. Mm. All right. Um, HYA, I'm, cr- I'm cringing. But who are you? Any runners, Jono? Rob's, Rob's uh, I mean, sorry, Pete's, uh, Pete's scaring him a bit. <laughs> um, any runners? Yes, we do. Yeah. We had Grouse Mountain, unfortunately, narrowly defeated there yesterday at Ballarat. Um, but looking forward, we've got two on Saturday, Poland in the last at Flemington, 
at a big price with Blake Shin on. And uh, Major L race six, I believe it is, at Eagle Farm. Hasn't he done a great job with that horse? Fantastic. Oh, Jones. Three from four this prep so far. Um, Robbie Dolan sticks, so hard to beat again, stepping up to Saturday coming. Good. Are we are we having one bet with a hundred, or can we have two bets of fifty? Or no, I've already asked that. One, one bet, bet with hundred, but we'll yeah. allow fifty each way. Yeah. Okay. Well, I almost had I almost had one of my fifties on race ten, number one. Right. Well, there's a decent push for stupid, for stupid price. I think. All right. Perfect. That'll do us then. Thanks for joining us. Don't know what's available at Mailbag Bloodstock, my man. Two yearlings, Churchill Colt with Nathan Doyle, who is flying, and a yes, 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 Colt with Gay and Adrian, who are obviously flying. Uh, both bought at Magic Millions. And then two tried horses, Cruise Missile, lovely Savabile gelding with uh, Gavin Bedgegood. Uh, you guys have seen the results. We've had buying horses for Gavin in the past, tried horses, so. Hoping the same result there. And Order to Charge, who is a maiden galloper who will head to Mitch Bear at Kimbler Grange, who has some good form and some good SPs around, some very good horses in Victoria, Otago. Uh, what's the other one? Another Will, is it, is it that one? He, re- he started 460 versus Another Will, uh, former around Otago that will run around, and uh, Peter and I are both given a good chance to in the CS Hayes. And he also ran... Uh, Started at four dollars or five dollars versus Ginger and Pink, Ginger and Pink, who's a nice horse. So um, yeah, he's got the form line to say it's going to be very hard to beat uh, anywhere. The two tried horses have gone to Caroline Prices in uh, near Cranbourne to to uh, pre-train bulk up to give Gavin and Mitch you know good girthy rounded stocky animals to to work with uh, as a as a starting point, which has worked really well for us so far. And obviously the two Colts, um, the Churchill's at the breakers right now and the yes, yes, yes is probably a week away from going to the breakers. So, um, yeah, we'd love for you to get involved in any or all of them. Uh, if you're interested, Jono, J-O-N-O at the mailbag.com.au. But as we've talked about on this show today, there are very, very good horses returning. The tippy top are back in Sydney on Saturday and the horse whisper will be there. Um what he's going to take pre-meeting to get himself right, we're not going to talk about. Um, he, You do you, Rob. Yeah. But the mail that you will get via the app before the race is gold. It sets you up if you want to take yourself a little bit more seriously and build a platform for these animals through the rest of the autumn or if you just want to get told what to do. Let Rob hold your hand. Head to themailbag.com.au and buy stuff. And, Peter, what's the plan in Perth? They'll be racing at Pinjarra for Magic Millions on Saturday. Um, Ascot Sunday has been abandoned with 12 races next Wednesday at Ascot. So Wow. That's actually really that's names. actually that's actually enormous for people that love betting and love yeah. Peter. Because yeah. basically it's like the Perth test match where you can put the kids to bed and turn the cricket back on. We're gonna be able to bet and bet and bet uh, on Pistol. About 10. Yeah. That's glorious. Oh, that's exciting. So the midweek oh. Proper twilight session next Wednesday. Can't wait. That's been the Mailbag preview show, episode 291, I think Jono said. Hold on. Um, It was a pleasure. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you have a phenomenal weekend. Gamble responsibly, and bye for now.